Acts chapter 1. Are we rolling okay, Mick? We doing all right? All right. Does it sound good now, sweetie pie? All right. Because if nothing else, I want, I want to make sure the recording is okay. Acts chapter 9, or Acts chapter 1, this is where, sort of where we left off. I guess I need to read uh, why we're here. So you can stay in Acts 1 if you want. I'll turn back to Genesis 9 because that's the source of what we're doing. He says in Genesis 9 verse 8, God speak unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I behold, this, I never saw this before, I just now saw this, that this is really, I think, the first time Noah's sons hear God. Okay, I think this, this I may be wrong, but I've not seen God speaking to anybody else before except Noah. And so you can imagine Noah's sons are going, uh, I think dad's losing it. We're going to build a what? What's an ark? Oh, what's rain? They've never seen it. So anyway, God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl and of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth. Not if, but when. Remember that. Uh, it's like in Ezekiel 33 where God says, when I bring a sword upon the land. Not if, but when. God knew it was going to happen. And when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bows shall be seen in the cloud. This is a prophecy. It's, it's a covenant, but it's also a prophecy. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And uh, last week we looked at, and predominantly this is, this is really what I'm looking at here in Matthew 24, where Jesus said, and he's talking about the time of the end, when he appears in the sky, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Here we're talking about signs and tokens back here. And we're talking about a sign now. Uh, sh shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 9. When he had spoken these sayings, while they beheld, he was taken up, and lo, a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, which stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven so let's ask the lord to bless uh the, the message tonight uh, bless the streaming of the message that it goes forth in this place trouble free uh let's ask god that he'll watch over us and keep us and watch over the people of kenya and keep them and watch over all of our faithful people online that god will watch over all of you and keep you and hold on to you and hold fast and bless your families that's that's my biggest concern right now. Heavenly Father, we love you. And Lord, I thank you, God, for the people of Kenya, the people that are online, 
Uh, these people here in this church, all of them, Lord, I love every one of them, and I thank you so much for them. Father, I thank you for my dear friend, Pastor Reg. Lord, who is, he loves this country. He loves the land that his forefathers gave him to work. He's worked that land. He's farmed that land. And Father, he's just a man of the land. He loves this country. And I thank you, Lord God, that he's providing a way for us to defend ourselves, our land, our families, our church. Father, dare we say, defending our liberties. And Father, I thank you for that. But Lord, I also know that there is a physical battle and a spiritual battle. Bullets don't do well in spiritual battles. And Father, teach us how to be soldiers in that army that are wrestling with spirits, principalities, and powers, and rulers, and spiritual wickedness. God, that you would make us fit soldiers for your kingdom's sake. We would use the sword and the shield that you have given us, the helmet, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. God, that you would give us all of those things I don't mind buying the bullets from Brother Reg, but Father, that what you offer us is free. And Lord, teach us how to use it. Help us, dear God, to, that no matter where we go, we take it with us always. And Father, help me and help these people tonight be fit soldiers for your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the word you've given us tonight we pray dear god that you would give us light and understanding of that word and father open up our eyes and help us to see things we've never seen before remind us of things we've already seen uh, but lord just bless the teaching of your word tonight we love you we thank you lord for blessing us the way you have and we ask god that you continue to do so for your name's sake and your kingdom's sake i love you jesus I love you, Father, Holy Spirit, I love you, and I thank you for the comfort that you give me. Bless your word tonight, I pray in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said. Turn to Revelation chapter 1. Uh, the official title of the book of Revelation, and let me, let me give you a little word study for a minute just briefly what does the word apocalypse mean gary what is the word apocalypse you, know, you hear on the news uh an apocalyptic event took place today uh, something of apocalyptic significance when they use that word how are they how are they defining that word chaotic, chaotic. Like the end of the world, big, a big blow up that, you know, is going to be the end of the world type something, right? People waiting for an apocalyptic event, right? But what's the real meaning of the word apocalypse? Huh? Mm -mm. Revelation. It's pretty simple. Uh, people of, of a former time of old referred to this book as the apocalypse. But the meaning of the word apocalypse is not blow up the earth or something chaotic or everybody starting a war. It means something to be revealed. It is revealed. Okay? It comes from Greek. But that's what it means. Revealed. And so the, the official title of the book of Revelation is in verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And you can actually find that phrase in other places in the Bible. Two or three times, I don't remember. But the revelation of Jesus Christ. He, we believe him, and we've not seen him. We don't know what he looks like, but we still believe him and believe in him. But one of these days, He's going to show himself to the world, to Israel. 
He is going to be revealed just like, uh, boy, I turn right to it, 2 Thessalonians. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then shall the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So the man of sin is going to be revealed. Jesus is going to be revealed to the whole world. They're going to, they're going to see him in the air. They're going to see what he looks like. Now again, I make this point because it's a very important point. Paul warned us about another Jesus. And he didn't say another Buddha. He didn't say another Allah. He didn't say another Joseph Smith. He didn't say another Barack Obama. He said another Jesus. So that tells me, and there's other, you know, the word antichrist, another Christ. So I know from the Bible that there are two of them. One of them's the real one. One of them's a fake. You remember the show, To Tell the Truth? Remember that show? Will the real Walt Disney please stand up? And the guys would bob up and down for like a minute, right? And then the real one would stand up. Well, I think that Antichrist is going to appear and people are going to fall for it. That's Jesus. He's Jesus. He looks like all the pictures. He looks like all the statues. That's Jesus. But it's not Jesus. And God's real people, because we believe the Bible, God's not going to let us be deceived. He, don't worry. Don't worry. Unless, of course, you're a fake. Then I would worry. But if you're the real deal, don't worry. He's not going to let you. So he's telling us, how will we know Jesus when he appears? He will be in the clouds. And we'll go, oh, that's Jesus. Okay, and we'll know it. Um, so the official title of the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is revealed in this book, okay? So he says it in verse 7. How is he going to be revealed? How is it going to happen? He says, behold, verse 7, he cometh with clouds, chapter 1. And every eye shall see him. See it? Everybody's going to see him. Now the flat earthers said, that proves the earth is flat right there. Because then, you know, if it's round, how will he appear to everybody? Trust me. Okay. He cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him. Who's that? That's Israel. Israel pierced him. Even though the Roman soldiers did it, it was Israel who had him crucified to begin with. Okay. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Why are they wailing? Because they're all going to see that they were wrong. Number one, they were wrong about the wrong Jesus. Number two, they were wrong about Jesus being real even to begin with. And everybody is going to go, uh Oh, or other things like that. You get it. But that's what's going to happen. Verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. So who was it in Genesis 1? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Who was that? That was Jesus, the Alpha. And I had, I had made this observation here a while back, dealing with the Hebrew roots, who claimed that Jesus spoke Hebrew, and that John spoke Hebrew, he's a Jew. So they made a claim that the original book of Revelation would have been written in Hebrew, would have been written in Hebrew. The problem is they don't have an ancient copy of the book of Revelation written in Hebrew. They don't have one. So you know what they did, Ron? They made one up. What they did was they took the Greek, the, the Greek 
book copy of Revelation in the Old Greek, translated it to Aramaic, which is related to Hebrew, or Hebrew, and said, this is the real book of Revelation. But anything in there that didn't match what they believed, they changed to make it say other things. And boy, that's slick. Okay? So that's what they did. I'm the Alpha and Omega. So Jesus is not identifying himself with the Hebrew language. Alpha and Omega are Greek letters. Gentile language letters. Not Jewish language letters. I'm not the Aleph Tav. Aleph is the first letter in the Hebrew. Tav is the last letter in Hebrew. He didn't say, I am the Aleph Tav. Even though all the Hebrew roots people say, he said, I am the Aleph Tav. He would have said that. And let me ask you that question. If you were in court, and you're on the witness stand, and the lawyer says, how do you know he did it? I know him, and I know he would have done it. Do they accept that in court? No. Objection, your honor. Speculative. He's speculating. He didn't see him do it. Oh, he would have done it, though. I know him. That was something that he would have done. That'll never pass. And that's what they do. Anyway, I'm the Alpha Omega. The beginning and the ending. Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So before, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, was Jesus there? Sure he was. He was before the creation of all things. He wasn't created with everything that was created. He already, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And the Jews knew what he was saying. That inflamed, that infuriated them. But anyway, which, is the, which, which was and is to come, the Almighty. Um, turn to Revelation 10 very quickly. Reg Kelly said that he um, had a run-in with some Mormons, missionaries. White shirt, black tie, bicycle. And they stopped him. He was in his truck. And they, were, they pulled in wherever he was and they stopped him. They had literature to give him. And they said, sir, can we give you this literature? And Reg knew who they were. He said, tell you what, boys. He said, I'll listen to you talk if you answer one. Will you, will you be honest and answer one question for me? And the guy said, sure. And Red said, was Jesus Christ God Almighty? And the lead guy started going around that by des who, describing who the Mormon Jesus is. And Red said, stop. Let's get back to my question. Was Jesus Almighty God? And again, he went, drew, he went circles around that question. And Red said, stop. And he could see the guy getting mad. He said, I'm asking you a simple question. It's yes or no. Was Jesus the almighty God? And then he said, the, finally the guy said, no! Red said, thank you for being honest with me. Okay? But let me show you in the Bible that he is almighty God. And I'm sure that Revelation 1 was one of those verses, the Almighty. And Mormons don't believe that. They don't believe it, okay? Now, Revelation 10, talking about things people don't believe. Revelation 10, no, notice this. I saw another mighty angel, and I've taught on this before, but I believe this is Jesus right here. I saw another mighty angel. Jesus is identified as the angel of the Lord all through the Old Testament. That's him. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. Jesus is coming down from heaven. Notice that he is clothed with a cloud. Clothed with a cloud. He's coming in the clouds. He's coming in the clouds. A cloud received him out of their sight. This same Jesus shall so come again in like manner. Then it said a rainbow was upon his head. A rainbow, that's what we're talking about in Revelation 9. The bow is in the cloud. You see that there? The bow's in the cloud. And then uh, you have um, in Ezekiel 1, when Ezekiel sees that chariot coming out of the north and the angels and the wheels, he says, I see one like unto the Son of Man sitting on that 
and he has, uh, as it was, a bow in the cloud in the day of rain over his head. And he said, this was the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Well, that's there, right there. Rainbow was upon his head. And his face was, as it were, the sun. That's Jesus. Matthew 17, he's transfigured. and His face is like the sun. Moses came down in a type of that from Mount Sinai. His face is like the sun. In fact, when you look at Revelation 1, if you turn back a couple pages... Re Revelation 1. Remember, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> verse 10. I was in the spirit in the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest write in a book. Send it to the seven churches which are in Asia and to Ephesus and to Smyrna and Pergamos and Thyatira and Sardis and unto Philadelphia and Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Remember, Jesus said, where two or more gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so he said, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, girt about the paps with a golden girdle and his head and his hairs were white like wool, white as snow and his eyes were as a flaming fire and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace and his voice was unto sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword and his countenance was as the sun. Shineth in his strength. So back in Revelation 10, his face was as it were the sun. And his feet as pillars of fire. Well, that's what we just read about Jesus. His feet was fine, like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Same description. Okay? So I think that's Jesus. But then notice, verse 2, he had in his hand a little book open. If you go back to Revelation 5, he takes the book out of the hand of God. And he opens the seven seals. Now the book is open. He's holding it in his hand. And his, um, in verse 3, he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. He's a lion. And in chapter 5, he's described as a lion of the tribe of Judah. So that's what I, that's what I believe. And others disagree with that. That's fine. That's no big deal. But that's what I believe. But the idea here is, is that he's clothed with a cloud okay it's covered in the clouds and in the old testament every time god appeared to the israelites he had to be covered with a cloud of some kind they told aaron aaron before you go into the most holy place light the incense and let the incense burn and fill that room with smoke so that when you come in, you don't die because of the glory of the Lord inside that room. Whenever God spoke to the Israelites, he was the pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. He always spoke from behind a cloud so that his glory would not kill sinful man. Okay? In Revelation 14, I think he's, here's another appearance of Christ. In verse 14, I looked and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. He has a crown on his head. Who is he? The king. Sharp sickle in his hand. What's he going to do? It's time for the harvest. And the harvest is... It's taking place right before the vials of wrath are about to be poured out. Now remember back in Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. It was at harvest that they said, let's wait. Because the tares are going to change color. They're going to turn black. The wheat is going to turn golden like the sun. And see, then it will be, it'll be easy for you to tell the difference between what wheat is and what tares is. See, right now it's not easy to tell the difference. But soon, soon, as harvest approaches, and I believe right now we're starting to see the difference. 
starting to see the difference. Back in 1985, when I first went into Bible college, 84, 85, first went into Bible college, and I started hearing about other translations, and people were saying there's not much difference in the translations. Okay, that was 1985, 86, 87. But all of a sudden now, worse translations started coming out. The gender neutral translation, the message Bible. See, over time, they're going to get worse and worse and worse. And as they do, I still believe there's some good people out there, Christians, who are going to jump ship and say, you know what, I'm just going to go back to the King James. And people are doing that right now. That's, that's happening. Because they're starting to see, wait a minute, these are getting worse. And they keep changing the Greek text. So that tells me they're going to keep getting worse and worse. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, the Bible says. So anyway, that's, that's, here he is in a cloud, appearing in a cloud with a sharp sickle. If you go back to Revelation 10, when he appears in the cloud, there's something very important that's happening. The purpose of that event is, verse 7, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared to his servants the prophets. What's the mystery of God? Well, number one, it's that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's one, that's one of them. Number two, it's the fact that um, blindness in part is happening to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Another one is... Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. The rapture is part of that mystery. Another one is, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay. Another one is the mystery of iniquity. That's the Antichrist. He's going to be revealed. Right here is when everything that is a mystery is going to be a mystery no more. Everybody's going to know what's up. But it's going to be too late. Amen? Now, Hebrews 12, I like this. Hebrews 11, they call the Faith Hall of Fame. Hebrews 11, you have Abel, who believed. Enoch, who believed and was translated. Noah, who believed and was saved by the ark. Abraham, who believed. Sarah, who believed. They all died in faith. You have Isaac. You have uh, Jacob. You have Joseph. Moses. You have um, uh, Joshua. You have Rahab the harlot mentioned by faith. Then it says Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and, and of the prophets. And it mentions all of these. And then it says in Hebrews 12, 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You see, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them. See, the dead get to go first. They believed first. And that's only fair, right? No pushing, no shoving. Let them go first. Then we are. And we're going to be compassed with a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Get ready to lay it aside, people. And let us run the race with patience uh, let, us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Author because he wrote the Bible, Gary. The finisher of our faith, that means the book of Revelation, it's over with. We don't, we don't have any more books waiting. It's all here. Uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So all the world's going to look at the Antichrist and believe that it's Christ. But it's not. 
And then they're going to lay shame on us and reproach and condemn us and say, you're following the wrong one. Here's Jesus right here. And Jesus said, if any man say, here is Jesus of there, believe it not. Okay? Get ready to be shamed and bear the reproach. Get ready to do that, to bear that reproach. Because if the world hates you, you're doing something right. Amen? Ezekiel 1. I mentioned this earlier, so I'm not going to tarry here long, but Ezekiel chapter 1. This is the setup. He said in verse 4, I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. What's a whirlwind? Yeah, it's a big cloud. A great cloud. There it is. And a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof is the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. You see, again, here's clouds. Here's clouds. And he, he goes into a lot of detail to describe the, the cherubs and the wheels and all that stuff. But then we get down to verse 28 and he says, he says there's a firmament there. And on that firmament, a throne. And he says in verse 28, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This is was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. He saw the glory of the Lord, and it caused, he's going, I'm falling on my face. I'm not going to stand and shake my fist at God or show disrespect to him. I'm going down. I'm falling on my face. Because he knew who he was looking at. He was looking at Jesus Christ in the clouds with a bow over him amen now so that does that make sense now genesis 9 when you see the cloud and you see the bow in the cloud so who is the token of the covenant the token of the covenant is jesus christ and if we go back to genesis 9 and remember who he said it to noah and who Four people. Noah and his three sons. He revealed it to four people, just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, Exodus 16, turn there. Oh, Gary, I love this. Gary, while you're turning to Exodus 16, do you happen to know how many chapters are in the book of Genesis? You can sneak a peek if you want. Not 38. I gave him a chance. I heard that. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> tisk tisk tisk. So there's fifty in Genesis, right? So we're in Exodus sixteen now. Okay, so sixteen plus fifty is we're in the sixty-sixth chapter of the Bible now. Do you think we're going to see something related to the Word of God in this chapter? Verse ten. It came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Look at that. I get doodads do every time I read that. You see that, Rhonda? The glory of the Lord. That was what we saw in, in Ezekiel, wasn't it? As the appearance of the bow on the day of the rain, that's the appearance of the glory of the Lord. So now, the glory of the, now we know who the glory of the Lord is. It's Jesus. He's in the cloud, isn't he? Now, look at verse 4 of Exodus 16. Let's back up a little bit. Then said the Lord unto Moses, These exact words, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. So, remember what I said, Gary? We're going to see something about the Bible. This is the first time man is introduced. First time. 
And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Gary, if you look up on the screen, the words that I have underlined that God spake there is exactly 66 words in the 66th chapter of the Bible. Exactly. Okay? And remember what the word manna means. It means, ooh. That's what the word manna means. It means, what is it? Because it, they had never seen it before. It fell from heaven, and they didn't know what it was. And it wasn't until Jesus showed up and he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven, which your fathers ate and are now dead. But if you eat of this bread, You'll live forever. Amen? Genesis 37. Almost done. I'm going to let you go. But I got, I got to finish this. Then I'll let you go. Because then we're going to move on to something else next week. Genesis 37. Notice this. These are the generations of Jacob. This is verse 2. Joseph being 17 years old. There's a reason why he's 17 was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Billah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was of the son of his old age, and he made him a what? A coat of many colors. He's, remember, he's clothed with a cloud, and the many colors are the rainbow colors. So who is Joseph a picture of? Jesus Christ, clothed with his Father's own glory. Whew. Now, remember when Jesus came the first time? Because every time God shows up, he's, he's covered with clouds, right? So when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, was he wearing clouds? Was it cloudy outside? The Bible doesn't say anything like it, but what does the Bible say? Luke chapter 2, verse 7. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Now, why does the Bible have to tell you that? And laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a what? It's always the sign. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, how out of the ordinary is that? What's the first thing they do with babies when they're born? Swaddle them. They swaddle them. So whoop de do? Really? He swaddled? That's how we're going to know him? But why swaddling clothes? Why mention it twice? And why is it so important? Where's the clouds? Job 38. Job 38. Job 38. Job 38. And this is one of those things, if you don't have a King James Bible, you will never see this. Ever. Because I checked. None of the other Bibles say it this way. None of them do. I'm waiting to put it on the screen. I ain't going to show it to you yet. I want to make you look at it in your Bible. Job 38. And it will be in verse 9. Read verse 9. He's talking about the earth. What did he wrap the earth in? Clouds. The clouds were the swaddling band of the earth. 
The swaddling clothes that Mary wrapped Jesus in were a picture of Christ coming in the clouds because clouds is what God clothed the earth with. He said he wrapped a swaddling band. He said, when I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness, a swaddling band for it. And he's talking about the earth. The swaddling clothes that Jesus was wrapped in was a picture of him being clothed with the clouds. coming. His first coming was a picture of his second coming. And Gary's pondering that. Isn't that cool, Gary? And Rhonda, I'm telling you, a King James Bible is the only Bible in the world you'll ever find that in. And it's in verse what? Because we're in Genesis 9. The clues are right there. I, I did. I, I asked God, God, why did Mary wrap him in swaddling clothes and why was that the big deal sign? Why did she say that was the sign? Why were the angels talking about that? And I looked and I looked and I looked and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And then I looked for the word swaddling in the Bible. And I went, that's it. He's coming. He came in the clouds. He came clothed in the clouds that God made as a garment for the earth and a swaddling band for the earth. Which, by the way, is, a way, is another way of saying the earth isn't flat. Because you don't swaddle a child by laying a blanket on top of them. What do you do? Like a mummy. Stand to our feet. I love this Bible. I love this Bible. You should have seen me on days that I would find stuff like this back years ago. I scared my wife to death. Because I would be sitting there staring at the floor going. She'd be like, what is he doing? And then I'd go. <gasps> and that would freak her out. I'll go running back to my computer, to my word search program. And she, would, she didn't know what in the world. After a while, she went, oh, there he goes again. <laughs> but what God was doing was making me love this Bible. Now, it takes everybody a different way. I get it. But for me, to be able to solve riddles and mysteries with this book, you are talking right up my alley. That's me, man. So when, when it's time, people, I'm telling you, remember he said he was coming in the clouds. And you don't need any other description than that. You don't need anything else. He's coming in the clouds. Father, I love you. And I love this book. And I cannot... Thank you enough for all that you gave me, all the mysteries and riddles that you solved, all the secrets, all the mysteries that were hidden. They're opened up with this book. And God, if you just showed me two or three of them, I, that, would have been in, that would have been enough for me. I would have said, this, this Bible is the Word of God. But God, you haven't stopped yet showing me mysteries, secrets, riddles, things that even the devil doesn't know. Thank you, Father, for that. And help me to share it with people, Lord, as long as you want to, God. It'll be my joy and my pleasure to share it with as many people as I can. So thank you, Father, for a, an amazing book. And Father, we'll, we'll look for your son, Jesus, and we will not mis mistake him. We won't miss him because we know what to look for. And the world 
Never will. They'll never figure it out. They'll never know it. So, Father, keep blessing people with your word. Let it be a joy to them to read it, to study it, to contemplate it. Think on these things. Dismiss us now in your care. Give us enough grace, Father, every day, the grace that we need. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Journey.